on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Jockstrap Sports. Uh, today I'm joined by Justin. Hey, what's up? Uh, at off underscore pod. I, <laughs> I was not ready for your pause. I'm sorry. I apologize. No, no worries. <laughs> no big deal. Um, uh, today we're going to do a little bit of talking about the, uh, the Padres signing of Manny Machado today. Real exciting signing uh, for a Padres fan. A um, little bit of skepticism in there, just because of character issues, some hustle issues. But uh, today we're kind of going to go over his contract, kind of talk about if it's too much money, too little money, if he deserves it. Um, kind of go over the stats and kind of see what what we can kind of dive into and really pick out things that are going to be good for the Padres, good for Manny, um, and vice versa. You know, bad things for the Padres and bad things for Manny. Um, but I think Justin's starting off. Um, you were saying something about his war? Oh, uh, yeah. So someone did a did a tweet, and they said that he um, has a one top war season. Okay, and that's it. Yeah. So yeah, you know, being in the top ten in the war is a a, a pretty big deal. Um, you know, that win above replacement is something a lot of people pay a lot of attention to. Not necessarily the the only thing out there. I mean, Bryce Harper this last year posted a 1.7 war, or 1.3. Can't deny he's still a great ball player. So, basing kind of all the facts on on just on war is a little tough. Uh, There's a lot of things that go into it. I know you were also saying, you know, you were looking up his stats, and last year batting 297 was his best overall year for his batting average as well, which a 300 batter is, is, is what you want in the lineup. Um, I don't think two two ninety seven is obviously not that far off, but are the Padres really going to get what they pay for? You know, coming in and paying this guy three hundred million dollars over the next ten years. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's really the question you have is: uh, is he worth the money that they're spending thirty mil a year? I believe that there, is there incentives too. I think that he might even have incentives built in as well. You know, I imagine so. Um, I don't think any of those details have come out just yet. Uh, because the deal is so fresh, I know they're still kind of pending a physical, technically. So he hasn't signed on that dotted line. Um, it is expected. Um, but I know Manny Machado is going to be meeting with the owners, Ron Fowler, and then the uh, general partner. Uh, of course, I'm forgetting his name now. But he is meeting with the two of them tomorrow. You know, they're going to go over the last little bits and pieces, basically cross the T's, dot the I's, and... and uh, Manny Machado is going to be a San Diego Padre. How, how, how do you feel about it? You know, as a as a Padres fan, um, following this offseason pretty close because you know, the, since the beginning of it, there's been rumblings that the Padres wanted to to make a big splash. And last year they came in eight years, hundred forty four million for for Eric Cosmer. You know, the Haas didn't didn't necessarily play up to expectations, but I think that coming into a, a full off season as a Padre, I think his his focus will, will be there a lot better. So I think he'll he'll perform a little better this year. Uh, with Manny Machado, you know, I do worry a little bit about the the character issues, you know, we saw in the World Series, you know, him kicking the guy's leg and stuff like that. Not hustling through through first base. I mean that's one of the big things with me is you're a professional ball player, you're getting paid millions of dollars sprint your ass to first base. Even if you think you're going to get called out, if you're sprinting your ass off, the guy's thrown from second, who knows? Maybe he gets the, the yips a little bit and he overthrows. You know, Then you're safe. You can turn it into two. Um, so that's kind of where my only concern is, is just his, uh, his ego a little bit. Um, I don't want him to come in and think he's you know, too high up the ladder to, to, to work hard and, and be a good teammate. So if the Padres can keep that in check, you know I'm happy to happy to have him on the team. He's a he's a great ball player. But yeah, I, th- I think I think it'll be uh, interesting to see how it pans out. Yeah, I, I I hear you. I definitely think he has some character issues that he needs to kind of figure out. He is young, but you're a professional ball player, like you were saying, getting paid millions of dollars. Like cool it. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, I know he's only he's been in the majors for seven years now. Spent the first six and a half with Baltimore. Um, 
for a while there, you know, Baltimore looked like they were going to be a, a, a good team in the AL East. Um, you know, that's something that's tough to do with the, the Red Sox and the Yankees. So to kind of lead that team along with Adam Jones um, at such a young age, I think was, was pretty cool to see. Um, kind of hoping he can come in and be a little bit more of a veteran presence, even though he's only 26 years old. You know, he's he's got a lot of experience in the majors and got a lot of knowledge to pass along. Um, another one of the little bit of a concern for me is uh, position-wise. You know, everything I'm seeing right now has him slated as the Padres shortstop. But, I mean, Fernando Tatis Jr. coming out of San Diego's farm system, you know, he's looking like a, a July call-up. Um you know, does that mean that Tatis is going to move over to third? I know there's been talk about it before. We talked about it on last week's episode. Um, so this kind of predicament is, is, is coming to, to fruition now. You're gonna, we're having to think about, you know, is Manny going to play short until Tatis is ready to get called up and then he'll switch over to third? Or is Tatis just going to start start the uh, the season at third? Um, not, a, not a whole lot of third base depth in the... Padres organization right now. I think they have Ty France as a, listed as a, a starter in the lineup, um, which is you know a little bit of a concern. Um, but I think uh, Andy Green and, and AJ Preller will be able to figure it out and kind of get guys in the in the right position to get some wins. Yeah, um, I did want to bring up a, a tweet that <laughs> that I saw. If you're okay with this, yeah, uh, yeah, of course, from, from Andrew uh, Siciliano. I think his name is he. He's like a uh, NFL Red Zone Channel guy. Um, anyway, so he was saying Manny Machado, three hundred million, one uh, three hundred season, which he's referring to last season, the two ninety seven one, uh, one top ten WAR season, never hit forty home runs, never stolen more than twenty bases, and then he says, "Good luck, San Diego." So <laughs> he's throwing a little shade, I think. Um, the three hundred million—that's so much money. But I, I was just pulling up Bryce Harper's stats, who's been in the year for six years as well. He has two three hundred season seasons. Um, he has uh, one season where he hit over forty home runs, and he has one season where he went over twenty stolen bases. So, I, I mean, they're different, different positions too um i don't know and i think bryce harper was hurt a couple of these seasons here yeah but you know and and kind of comparing as far as you know different positions different you know an outfielder versus an infielder i think there's different expectations you know coming in with bryce harper you expect a guy to to be busting out a lot of doubles Um, yeah exactly i never really look at bryce harper and think man that guy's gonna steal 40 bases right uh, you know, maybe when he was first coming into the league, I know he played center. He was a fast as hell guy, but you know, he's he's obviously kind of filled into his body. I think he's what twenty five now. Twenty six. They're 26? both. They're both twenty six. Yeah. Okay. You know, twenty six years old. He's obviously filled out. He's gonna wherever he goes. You know, he's gonna cement one of those corner outfield spots. Uh, so I think based on kind of what people expect. Um, you know, Manny Machado, I think for a long time, people just expected him to hit, hit bombs. Um, you know, I know last year he hit, what, 37 home runs, so not not, not bad there. But, you know, 40 is a, 40 is a tough number to eclipse. Yeah. So if that's what people are expecting, you know, they might be in for a little bit of disappointment. But I think people need to look at what he does for the team as a whole. You know, if he's able to, to move runners, obviously that's going to hurt his average. But... You know, it's a necessary thing. Um, if he gets a guy, you know, first to third on a on a ground ball to, to you know, second, I mean, it's not a terrible third, not first to third on that, but, like, second to third. You know, he's moving guys. I think it's, it's, a, it's a good thing to play into. Um, $300 million is a lot of money, and I yeah. think it's going to take a lot for, for San Diego Padre fans to kind of buy into that. Um I think, like I said, it's one of those things that the Padres system has to, to really kind of sit them down and be like, hey, you're going to lose the support of a lot of fans if you try to pull the same shit. Like, you got to, we need to see you working, we need to see you hustling, we need to, you know, the fans need to see that, or they're going to 
lose total total respect. Yeah, I mean, there's no excuse not to hustle if you're getting paid that much. Um, I, I also saw something on Twitter that was saying even with his contract, the Padres aren't even at average for payroll. No, they're they're still below. Yeah, which, the Padres with uh, with Manny Machado looking around right around 110, 110 million dollar opening day payroll. Um, I think the league average is like one thirty six. Yeah, so. They still got money to play with, you know. I know that the uh, there were some rumors out there earlier today that the Padres were still in on Bryce Harper. Um, they've kind of come out since and said that, you know, they're 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 bowing out with uh, with the Machado deal. Man, why not though? Oh, don't get <laughs> think me wrong. About I that. would love it. I'd think love about it. that. That'd be crazy. Get in Bryce Harper, trade yeah. Will Myers. You know, have a Renfro, Renfro Harper. Uh, Manny Margot, French Cordero kind of thing out there. Framil Reyes, you know, platooning in the corner spots. I think that'd be a solid ass outfield. But yeah, I think you know, you'd have Padres, to work on, work on pitching though. Oh yeah, you know that's yeah. that's that's where I'd obviously, honestly, like to see them spending more money. Um, and I think that that's one of the things that this signing today kind of shows us is the Padres' willingness to go after those big name free agents. Um, you know, I know that this year it was a lot of position guys that were the the big names. Um, you know, there's only a few starting pitchers out there that that are kind of demanding of, of big money in Dallas Keuchel and um, Gio Gonzalez. Um, you know, so if the Padres were to go after Keuchel, I mean, I'd, I'd I'd love that, but I don't know if this is necessarily the year. I think they got a, a lot of guys in the minors that they want to see develop this year and, and see if they could be call ups next year. Uh, but it is exciting, you know, that the Padres are, are looking to to kind of fill the gaps, you know, for 2020, 2021, um, and start being able to contend year in, year out. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and definitely a 26-year-old uh, kind of well, well-known well good player is a good guy to build a team around, definitely. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, think, and, and uh, since 2015, he's really had really good numbers. I mean, so it's really, yeah, it's it's hard to kind of debate against that. Yeah. But. You know, it's one of those things. The Padres are going to have one of the best infields in the majors. Um, they're going to have Ian Kinsler at second, Manny Machado at third, or at short, um, Eric Hosmer at first. And, I mean, whoever winds up at third, you know, whether it be Luis Urias playing there every now and then, Ty France is the starter. You know, Ian Kinsler maybe going over, Jose Perella getting thrown into the mix. I mean, you never know. The Padres have gotten creative before um, as far as where they're playing, guys. So I think they can they can absolutely do it again, and they can piece some things together. And who knows? might work out in their favor. Yeah, yeah exactly. And uh, uh, for people that might not know, uh, the Brewers, who are also good at that, just re-signed Moustakis. So great, this... great signing, I think, by you guys. For one year, yeah, yeah, I think know, so I, too. Yeah, I, I know Mustakis was was one of the guys that I wanted the Padres to go after. Yeah, you know, I was thinking there's no way Machado would want to come to San Diego. There's no way. There's no way. You know, I'm glad it happened. Uh, yeah, but I was a little upset when I heard that Mustakis signed with the Brewers again. I yeah, like, shoot. Yeah. I was like, I know the Padres were looking at him as a backup plan. Yeah, and the guy is deserving to be your your first plan. Yeah, and obviously he was with the uh, with with Milwaukee and obviously you know he saw he saw a team that he can come right back into and play for another you know championship down the road yep um you know they're gonna be right back in it I think this year and I think with that signing they can pretty much cement their top 10 status yeah I certainly hope so um I, I would like to see the Padres do better though as well especially in, in that uh was a division you know, when did you break it down? Yeah. Is it conference and division kind of like football? I don't know. I don't know baseball too much. Yeah, it's just division. Yeah. So, and, and then Dodgers are in there, right? Yeah. Yeah, we got yeah. the uh, the 